So now that I've gone through uh, my small encapsulation um, explanation, we're going to go ahead. As you see, when we declare properties, when we declare functions, they're always denoted by public or private or some other keywords which I'm not going to explain. Uh, this defines the scope of the class, whether they can be accessed in or outside of the class. I covered this slightly in some earlier videos, but here it's going to be more important. In this case, I'm going to have two functions, which are add values and multiply values. And now that I have these two functions, they are going to call uh, calculate values. And here we are going to actually do our calculations. Okay, so the reason why I did that is because of the theory of encapsulation. Um, if we um, go into um, form one and we type in something like uh, calculator dot calculate values, we would have to send in a parameter that we follow this code right here of add or multiply. That would re require that we know how inside the class works. We do not want to know how the class works. So instead, we are just going to type add and multiply values and then it will calculate the values in here. And as you see by the denote private, this, this function right here isn't able to be accessed outside of the class. And this defines scope and provides the, the theory of encapsulation. Okay, so let's get started here. We are going to uh, put in a string. And we're going to proceed to copy the code from here all the way to here. Well, mostly. Okay. See, I'm getting my code and how I plan to do this together. I'm going to have to uh, change a lot of this code. Paste. Okay, we have a try catching it. Um, as you see, there's a lot of problems. This message box. You cannot show a message box when you're in this class because this is not a form. There's no message box in here because this is not a form. So we're going to have to create a set of return values. And here's how we're going to make our code look like. We're going to have it in our form up here. We're going to have message box dot show. And then we're going to um, put in calculator dot add value, something like that. That's what we want to do. Okay, so let's go ahead and do it. So we're going to have to uh, change these all to strings. Because we are going to return some type of string. And we're going to go back in the code. And then up here, we're going to I'm going to type in calculator. Um, calculator equals new calculator. And oh my gosh, I have a lot to cover. I never even covered the new keyword. The new keyword uh, is a special keyword which allows you to, um, well, it's basically used when you create objects, when you turn classes into objects and it creates a space in memory for the calculator object. That is just a brush over the new keyword. I don't have much time to discuss it in this video. Okay. And actually, let's see. No, I don't have to do that. Actually, I believe I do. Yeah, public. Okay. So we're going to type in calculator dot as you see, add values is here. And we're going to type here calculator dot multiply values. Okay. And now we're going to have to remove a lot of this code here. Okay. Let's go ahead and remove the try state and catch statements as it's not it's not practical for what we are doing now. I'm going to remove 
uh, this code here. So we just have our, and we have to remove this too. Okay. And then we are going to calculation equals add here. We're going to add the call to this function right here. Calculate values. We're going to add add. Put values multiply. And to make this even simpler, we could probably use the boolean, but I'm not going to do that. Okay. If calculate. If calculate equals multiply. We're going to turn this into a string. And then we are going to get rid of this code. We we'll select return sum. Okay. Let me get rid of this code. Select return um product. There we go. I was trying to find my. As you see, it gives us cannot convert doubles. Okay. We and we have to parse these values. Okay, here we go. Calculate values on all code passed return a value. Okay, I'm going to get rid of the if. And we're just going to have an else statement. There, there are other ways to make this work, but I'm not going to have that. Have that. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this. We're going to type in return calculate values add and return calculate values multiply. Okay, so if I did this correctly without any mistakes, I made this application uh, fully object oriented. We can safely uh, delete um, this a function right here. Okay, which leaves us with this a small amount of code, calculator.add values, calculator.multiply values. Actually, whoops, I did that improperly again. I'm sorry, guys. Let's see. So. There we go. Let me just double check my work here. I'm returning strings. So my parameters are correct. Okay, let's go ahead and compile. I did not include an exception handle yet because I'm still looking. Field type calculator is less accessible than field type for one calculator. Okay, let's see what I have here. Field type less than one dot calc is less accessible. Form one dot calculator. Okay, I'm gonna try something else. Let's see here. Nope, it's not contain a definition for test and no extension test. Let's see. Oops, I have to run this code here. Okay, now I got to work. Five, five, add. And we got zero. That's not supposed to happen. Uh, and we got zero. Okay. We have a problem, as you see, in our code here. Let's go ahead and debug. Okay. Public first number equals to zero. Oh. Okay. Oh my gosh. I'm so stupid. What did I do here? I forgot to. Uh, set the values here. 
um, text box one dot text equal actually calculator equals whoops calculator dot um, first number equals text box one dot text and in enter text dot second number equals text box two dot text okay there we go and we have to parse these as doubles I may have to create a part two of this video because I think I went over 15 minutes but uh, let's see here we're going to copy this code paste it here compile four five four eight sixteen yes there we go it works okay so that was actually quite a bit of debugging that can prove the that's actually a better world example of the problems that can occur when a refactoring code okay so now let's add in our try uh, statements here and make this a uh, better uh, formed application okay first number dot text okay We're going to include a try block. And we're going to have a catch statement right here. And I'm going to uh, copy this code right here. And I'm going to uh, paste it right here. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to compile this application one more time. Test, test, add. Input string was not in correct format. Multiply, input string was not in correct format. These are doubles, so we're going to have to make these numbers extra big to make them have an influence add oh my gosh the doubles actually can handle these big of a numbers and this is a, a notation for um, scientific numbers okay so I guess I can't uh, test the overloading exception because doubles are extremely large but I think you get the point here okay this was a really long video where I covered um, the extreme basics of object-oriented programmer programming. We uh, took this um, program that we started out with, we wrote a class, and we uh, refractored all the code to make it object-oriented. Okay, that is it for this tutorial. For more tutorials, please go to thehackersjournal.com.